Uh, before we get to legs and our conversation, uh, I do want to do our DraftKings Sportsbook segment. And I want to talk about the Boston Celtics, who beat the Lakers yesterday uh, fairly handily. Uh, another great performance from a number of their players. Kristaps Porzingis was awesome. Uh, Derek White had a great game. Uh, the Boston Celtics right now are 15-1 and one, uh, with their starting five. And to me, uh, when they are whole, as of right now, December 26th, uh, to me, they are the best team in basketball. Um, and DraftKings Sportsbook actually reflects that. Uh, Boston right now to win the Eastern Conference at plus 155. Bucks next closest at plus 180. Philly at plus 500. Then there's a big drop off. To win the NBA championship right now, Boston, the favorites right now, at plus 350. Uh, the Bucks at plus 380, Nuggets at plus 425. Then there's a drop off. The Boston Celtics are the odds on favorite at minus 180 to end up with the most regular season wins. Look, I think when they made the trade for Porzingis, uh, I think it changed their team. It changed the dynamic of their team. It allowed Derek White to be elevated to more responsibility, particularly on the offensive end. Uh, particularly as a playmaker, particularly in pick and roll. We're going to see uh, some stats here on that. Uh, it gave them optionality in terms of how they wanted to play. Again, this is not a high-volume post-up team, but they are one of the highest-volume post-up teams in the NBA this season, and they're scoring extremely efficiently because they're able to hunt matchups. They're able to hunt matchups with Jalen Brown, with Jason Tatum, with Kristaps Porzingis. And... The third thing that Porzingis and the, why I think he really changed this team is because of the ability for him to play two-man game with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And in particular, the Jalen Brown, Kristaps Porzingis two-man game on the second side has been really good for the Celtics. Then they get Drew Holiday. And now, to me, they have the best defensive backcourt in the NBA, arguably two of the best, if not the best, guard defenders in the NBA in Derek White and Drew Holiday. And so, and, and then you, of course, have Al Horford uh, coming off the bench, still doing great things uh, at, you know, 36 years old. So I, I love this team. I love where they're at. Uh, you know, look, Derek White, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this because uh, I tweeted out last night uh, after the game, uh, or actually during the game, uh, fourth quarter of the Lakers game, I'm sitting in my brother's house. Uh, he lives out here in Denver. He's, you know, making dinner for his Christmas dinner. Kids are in the playroom, and I'm just making an observation. You know, Derek White is an all-star. Uh, and based on the reaction to that, I, I mean, I thought I'd get some Celtics fans and be like, hey, yay, Derek White for all-star. I thought I'd get some, you know, some pushback. Uh, no way he's better than so-and-so. I did not expect the exact reaction I got, uh, which uh, it's interesting to me because I think we need to stop talking in absolutes, and I'm guilty of that too. Derek White is having an all-star level season. Would have been a better comment that I could have made. Uh, Derek White should be considered for the all-star game. Would have been a better comment that I should make. Uh, however, Derek White. Uh, you know, outside of, I think, you know, four guards right now uh, has as good a case as anyone. Um, and truthfully, uh, has has a, as good a case, I think, on the Celtics right now, uh, everyone besides Tatum in terms of an all-star. So in the history of the NBA, really good uh, regular season records often lead to multiple all-stars on that roster. Uh, we've seen that a number of times, Boston Celtics come to mind, right? They get they get four guys on, Rondo, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, KG. Uh, of course, the Warriors having three at a time, and then with the, the KD years having four at a time. Uh, the Detroit Pistons back in the 2000s, the San Antonio Spurs with their dynasty getting multiple All-Stars. Like this, These things happen. You know, if, if a team sort of separates itself and their guys are playing at a high level, uh, teams get multiple guys on. And oftentimes, uh, guess what? Uh, the third and fourth guy are role players, okay? So role players make all-star games. Uh, that has been the case throughout time. Uh, good teams are rewarded with multiple all-stars. 
Uh, I do think as well as the Celtics are playing right now, uh, they are going to have some separation uh, between them, maybe not the Bucs, uh, but the Bucs schedule will get a little bit harder towards the end of January. Uh, but all-star voting will be done by then. So likely that Boston ends up with multiple all-stars. Why do I think Derek White uh, is deserving of consideration for an all-star game? Well, uh, let's just start with the impact on winning, Okay. Derek White, when he's on the floor, Boston is uh, has outscored opponents by 265 points so far this season. Uh, that is third in the NBA. So far, he's only trailing Tyrese Maxey and Nikola Jokic. They are 22 and four with him in the lineup. Uh, when we start getting into basic, basic advanced stats, these aren't even really advanced stats. These are just like tracking stats. Like, hey, a guy runs a pick and roll. Did he score? That sort of thing, right? Uh, he is second in the NBA, the entire NBA, in points per direct pick. Okay, Tyrese Halliburton, number one. Second in the NBA. There we go. Second in the NBA in points per direct touch. Uh, if he gets the ball, he's second in the NBA in generating a point. That's pretty good. Uh, top 10 in the NBA on the other end in points per direct touch allowed, meaning if he's guarding someone who touches the ball, He's one of the 10 best guys and not allowing that guy to get a point. Uh, he's top 10 in the NBA in field goal percentage allowed as the closest defender. So what you're seeing, let's forget the counting stats. Let's get away from the counting stats, okay? For a second, because we're going to get back to the counting stats. What you're seeing is one of the best two-way players in the NBA impacting winning on the best team in basketball. Okay, that to me is at least the start of some all-star consideration, despite the fact that some people don't think that role players ever make all-star games. Okay, now let's get into some advanced stats. Uh, so advanced stats, he's one of six or seven guys in the entire NBA to be 90th percentile in both offensive EPM and defensive EPM. Uh, EPM is simply estimated plus minus, which takes out the randomness of a basketball game, garbage time, a hot streak of a cold shooting night. Like it just, it just, functions as a way to take away the noise 90th percentile in both offensive and defensive epm he's seventh in the league in estimated plus minus he's right behind luka Doncic, uh 13th in the nba in win shares uh, ninth in win shares per 48 minutes he's 10th in box plus minus if you took the eight catch-alls on all these sort of advanced individual metrics um he's 21st overall ninth best player in the east so far fifth best guard in the East. Um, he's got a case. He's got a strong case. I, of course, support star players, the guys that are recognized stars, having productive seasons. Of course, they should get all-star consideration. Of course, guys like Trey Young, who's been a monster for the last month, he should probably be in the all-star game. Yeah, okay. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, great counting stats. Uh, he should probably get all-star consideration. Yeah. You know, the guys to me in the East at the guard position, Maxey, Brunson, Halliburton, Dame. I think those guys are going to be in the All-Star game. If I get a media vote this year, uh, I get to vote on the starters, just the five starters in each conference. As of right now, not sure who I would vote for out of those four, but I would vote for two of those four guys um, as the starters, okay? There's 12 spots. We all know that. There should be 15. Every year, until the NBA changes the rule, we're going to put up episode one of Islands in the League, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, and why I think there should be 15 roster spots. Maybe at least 14. Give us, give us more roster spots for the All-Star game. It's never been harder as a percentage of players to make an All-Star game. So there's 12 spots, two backcourt, three frontcourt in both the first 10, and then there's two wildcard. I think you can make a strong case for 15 guys right now in the Eastern Conference on December 26th of getting one of those 12 spots. And a bunch of those spots to me are not really up in the air, right? Joel Embiid is going to be in the All-Star game. Giannis, Jason Tatum, they're going to be in the All-Star game, right? Uh, Bancaro has a case. Scotty Barnes, I'm not trying to leave anybody out here, okay? They're, they're a bunch of guys. Derek White has as strong of a, a case as anyone, okay? I should not have been in so absolute. Derek White deserves consideration for the All-Star game. Uh, secondly, I do want to say one thing when, when I, when I make a, when I make a take, when I, uh, give an opinion, um, I don't think I'm smarter than anyone. All right. My takes and my opinions 
are based on, of course, my experience as a player of being in locker rooms, uh, being in meetings, of watching film, playing this game for 30 years at a high level in high school and AAU, a high level in college and in the NBA. Okay. It's all based on my experience. All right. It's also based on the fact that like a lot of you sickos, I consume the NBA nearly 24 hours a day. Well, maybe not 24 because I do sleep eight hours a day. When I'm not sleeping, I'm consuming the NBA or I'm coaching my kids or I'm thinking about basketball. Like it, it, it all comes from that. Do I think I'm, I'm not smarter than anyone. I'm not smarter than anyone. I, I don't think I'm smarter. Than, but part of who I am as a person is just, if I say something, I mean it. If I say something, I mean it. If I give an opinion or if I give a take, I mean it. And it's logical and well-reasoned. And some of the reaction to the Derek White should be an all-star, like, guys, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why, 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 why are we, like, oh, you know, he's a role player. Can't be an all-star. He's a role player. Derek White is, like, I, I joke about this now. It's it's actually hilarious that ESPN left him off the top 100 at this point coming, coming into the season. Derek White in that Atlanta series last year was arguably the best player, like in that series. Again, I'm not, not, not counting stats. Again, counting stats, cool. He was the best player, arguably, in that series. In the playoffs. He was as good in the next two series. He was. Can we get away from the counting stats a little bit? Just a little bit. Watch the game. These advanced stats that pop up, like, it's not like the formula for advanced stat just, like, scours the NBA and scours Twitter and says, who's the random player I'm going to put in the top 10 along with Jokic and Shea and Giannis and all these, like, no, like, the, the, the real stats, and historically speaking, since we've started using these things, they've reflected how good a player is and how much impact he has on winning. They're, they're not like made out of thin air on a whim to troll us. Like I remember I got into a conversation four or five years ago about like advanced stats. and. One of the stats at the time, I won't say which one, but it's, you know, one of the, it's now defunct. I'm not going to lie. It's now defunct. But one of the advanced stats at the time for the, for the player metrics said that Nikola Jokic was the, the best player, was the most impactful player. This was four or five years ago. This is pre him winning an MVP. And I got in this argument with somebody. I was like, that's interesting, man. I think Jokic is pretty good. I, you know, I don't know if he's that good, but he's pretty good. And he's, and the guy was like, you know, if, your stat says that Jokic is the best player. Um, something, something's wrong with your stat. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know, man. Guy's been the best or one of the three best players in the NBA for like four years now. So I think the stat works. I think the stat works. All right. This has been another segment presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new customers an exclusive offer just for NBA fans. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code JJ. New customers can get $150 instantly in bonus bets for betting $5 plus score NBA League Pass on us. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code JJ. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and up age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. League pass reward issued as promo code to redeem subscription and must be claimed by January 15th, 2024. See DraftKings.com slash promos for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources.